This year's NHL offseason is going to be absolutely nuts, with some big-time players likely to be moved over these next few months. But who are the biggest and most likely NHL players to be dealt in this year's offseason? Well, watch till the end for every single pick, and hit that subscribe button for more trade content just like this all throughout the offseason. You won't want to miss it. Now, we got 15 names on the list today, and we have some pretty big stars here, and we're going to start off with a big one here at number one, and the first player that I think will be traded this offseason. First, I have Alex Dabrinkit of the Ottawa Senators. Now, Dabrink gets in a unique position. He's an RFA this offseason, doesn't have any contract, and we've heard so many rumors, so many, so much info swirling around him and his future in Ottawa, but it isn't really looking all too good in my opinion. He was a player that was good for Ottawa, but wasn't really surpassing the expectations, especially after the huge trade that went on with Chicago, and I feel like for Ottawa, they're in a really big crossroads, and I think they'll end up going in the trading direction, maybe even adding a different forward and to bring a deal but you can still see 25 years old and even this last year in 82 games had 27 goals 39 assists for 66 points but i would say for ottawa it was definitely still a disappointing year for him even if he did get hot in different points but i can definitely see a lot of teams still going after him even if it is just rfa rights but even though he doesn't have a contract a trade would still be massive and a haul would still be massive for ottawa maybe not as much as what chicago got back but still would be a pretty good return especially if ottawa is looking for nhl players now i could definitely see them getting a really solid one maybe even a one for one type of deal in a Debrinket trade next up moving on to the second NHL player that I see being dealt this offseason next up, I'm going to go to Jacob Markstrom of the Calgary Flames the Calgary Flames are in a unique position obviously they have their new GM in Craig Conroy who's going to be coming in and changing a decent amount of the team but I think a lot of the changes will come in the goaltending I think we could see Dustin Wolf step into the NHL role and I think he should be in an NHL role this next year and I feel like Jacob Markstrom might be the odd man out there especially with his cap it at six million dollars that's a lot for the flames especially with how inconsistent and just poor jacob markstrom has been as of late you can see in this last year in 2023 had an 892 save percentage in 59 games just simply not good enough and i think for the flames maybe they trade a trade vladar as well and get somebody else to be maybe the tandem goalie alongside wolf but i could see the flames having a lot of goaltending changes markstrom being among them. The only thing that can prevent a Markstrom trade from happening is Markstrom's full no move clause. But at the same time, if you tell him that he's going to lose his starter job anyways, I think he'd be fine going somewhere else. Now going on to number three and a player that we've seen already rumored over this last week really to be dealt. Next up, I have Tavo Teravainen of the Carolina Hurricanes. A really interesting name. And of course, he was banged up a little bit this last year. But you can see at age 28, he has one year left in his deal at $5.4 million. And you can see what he did this last year. Played 68 games, got 12 goals, 25 assists, 37 points, and was injured for a lot of the playoffs when he was in there in the playoffs was just completely irrelevant, really. And if you look with Teravainen, he's an interesting player. He had a really great bounce back year in 2022, and even in the playoffs, played pretty well. But I feel like with the Canes, we'll see a ton of movement in the four group. With Teravainen, he might be a luxury they don't really want to afford any longer. He could be a part of the trade that maybe, again, is what we talked about in the last trade rumor video about maybe a connection with the Winnipeg Jets, perhaps. But I see Teravainen definitely being dealt and a player that will be a part of the huge amount of changes with this Canes 4 group. Now going on to number 4 and a name that might be a little bit premature to mention, but to me, I mean, we will still be talking about him. And that is Alec Martinez of the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, obviously, Vegas is in the cup final, but even teams that win the cup or even are in the cup final will probably make some big changes in the offseason. I mean, the Golden Knights are among them. With Vegas, with Alec Martinez, he makes $5.25 million for the next year after this and I think is another contract that they won't be able to afford too much longer especially with how much they're going to be paying some of their RFAs this year and already some of the younger players on the defense like White Cloud and Zach Haig I could see Martinez kind of being on his way out now he's had some great years as a just pure defense to defense move Vegas even in 2021 got 32 points of 53 games he's been a hugely influential player on that roster but at the same time he's also turning 36 this summer and I feel like for the goal Knights they might be expecting that regression now let's move on to number five and the fifth player I see being traded this offseason. This one is a pretty obvious one. Connor Garland of the Vancouver Canucks. This is almost a sure bet in my opinion. It could be Garland, it could be Myers, 
I think Garland is just a little bit more likely, though. He makes $4.95 million for the next three seasons, and it's just a contract the Canucks cannot keep any longer. You can see, points-wise, still pretty good. 46 points in 81 games, but again, it's just a luxury I don't think they can really afford right now, and especially with just, again, some of the defensive holes, and I think the way Vancouver is trending, Garland will definitely be on the way out. Going on to number six, though, and a little more of a juicier take here, we, of course, saw Kyle Dubas hired as new president of hockey operations, and we'll likely see a pretty sizable GM come in as the new one, but to me, at number six, I have Jeff Petrie. To me, we'll see a lot of turnover around the core of Crosby, Malkin, and Latang this offseason. Petrie, I think, is one of the most obvious bets. Now, Mikel Granlund would obviously be a player the Pittsburgh Penguins would love to move, but he might be a guy that's too expensive for other teams to take on, unless there's some heavy salary retention. Jeff Petrie, I think you could get rid of at a pretty decent cap, maybe only a little bit of salary retention, but you can see he'll be turning 36 this December, and he makes $6.25 million for the next two seasons. He was fine in his first year at Pittsburgh, nothing spectacular, nothing absolutely horrible, but I also think for Pittsburgh, and the way Kyle Dubas is trending, he might want to add some more youth around that big core, and Jeff Petrie will be aging out pretty soon here. Now going on to number seven, another player that might be a little bit spicy take here, but at number seven, the seventh player I see being dealt this offseason, I have Marcus Foligno of the Minnesota Wild. Now, as an assistant captain, obviously Marcus Foligno leadership-wise has had a pretty good stake in Minnesota. You can see at a $3.1 million cap hit, he's a player that also might be too much of a luxury. You can see at a great 2022 and great 2021 points-wise, just continuing to get better and better, but this year was a huge stagnation period for him. 21 points in 65 regular season games, and then the playoffs was disastrous. Put the Minnesota Wild in the hole with too many penalties, too many times, and I think for Minnesota, that might have been the final straw in Marcus Foligno's boat with Minnesota, especially with how many, how much of a cast space issue they'll have over these next couple years. Marcus Foligno, I could definitely see being just traded for a couple of draft picks. Speaking of getting traded for draft picks, next up at number eight, we're going to go to a really interesting defenseman trade here with Ivan Provorov with the Philadelphia Flyers. He makes 6.7 five for the next two seasons and most importantly has no trade protection which is pretty rare for a top four defenseman like Provorov and the status of course that he signed with with Philadelphia but you can see at 26 years old he can still be fine to me he's definitely overrated on the ice but maybe it's a Philadelphia thing and maybe it's him being anchored on that top pair having so many big time minutes for so long now maybe in a middle pair kind of like a, a, a same situation as Ham Pistol and Holm maybe we see him rebound there will be interest if Provorov is available I expect him to be available this offseason, especially with Breer coming in and a new regime coming in. I see Provorov getting dealt and, again, likely being in a package for some pretty massive draft picks. Next up, going to number nine, another player that I think is extremely underrated in potential trade talks this upcoming offseason, and Anthony Mantha. He makes $5.7 million for this next year, isn't locked up long term, which I think is huge for Washington getting rid of him. But to me, that cap it is just too much for what he's been able to provide there. It's just been an absolute bust of a trade. He was solid in the limited time he got in 2022, but in 2023, again, was a little bit banged up and got 27 points in 67 games. Just simply not good enough, and especially considering he's almost making $6 million. That type of scoring for just a pure offensive guy is just unacceptable, and I don't think Manfa is going to be a guy that Washington keeps around for too much longer. Also, importantly, another player that doesn't have any trade protection either, so it'll be a little bit easier to get off the books, and I think for a team that's hoping for maybe a healthier rebounding Mantha, I could see why you trade for him, but he's a guy that I'm will definitely be dealt. Then next up at number 10, we're looking at the LA Kings and their defensive log jam. To me, the most likely guy to be traded will be Sean Dersey, 24 years old, six foot, making $1.7 million. We're going to see one of the LA Kings defensemen traded this offseason, if not two, but I think Dersey is the most likely option. You can see offensively, he's done some pretty good things over the last couple of years. This last year, getting 38 points in 72 games. Defensively, though, there's been some massive black hole moments, especially in the playoffs, but he's a player that is still growing, and I think for Maybe some younger teams, maybe a team like even Montreal, they might want to bring a player like him on, especially since he shoots right and could be playing on that right side, perhaps. But Dursey, I think, will be a pretty valuable addition and a pretty valuable asset for LA and might, again, get a little bit back for them, too. Then going on to number 11, next up, I have Kaylee Ramoto of the Edmonton Oilers, another player that is extremely likely to be dealt. He makes $3.1 million 
dollars for the next year and he's another contract that is just way too much for what he provides and i like Kaylee Momoto in spurts you can see he got 25 points in video games this year but again that 3.1 million dollar cap it every little bit of cap space is necessary for edmonton and especially if they want to upgrade their defense yamamoto has to go simply put now going on to the final four top players that I see being dealt this year's offseason. Next up, we're going to have a couple of players here from the Colorado Avalanche. And to me, I think we'll see a lot of roster turnover for Colorado this year, especially as they hope to maybe rebuild their four group. The first pillar that might end up fall is Daniel Girard, who has that, of course, huge $5 million long-term contract. But I think he's a player that can still be pretty valuable to NHL teams, especially with how well he skates and how well he can be in the puck movement department. Even if there, again, is those defensive black holes, I can still see a lot of teams going after him, especially since he is still so young at age 25. But I think for the Avs, he's a player that is a little bit expendable. 37 points in 76 games this last year, but I think Gerard will be on his way out alongside another player. And that is going next up at number 13 is Alex Newhook, who is an RFA this next year, which provides some interesting, interesting notes here because he's 22 years old, hasn't really broken out yet with the Avs, had a 30-point season in 82 games th this year, but after having 33 points in 71 games last year and even going down in the AHL last year, it was expected that we'd see Newhook take that next step, be at least in that 40 point area, but that just hasn't happened. And there's still all the talent in the world for Newhook and he'll get a ton of interest. I could see them trading his RFA rights for maybe a more established NHL player, or even a defenseman perhaps. The next going on to the two last players on the list and joining them both together. Let's go on to number 14, the 14th player that I see being traded this offseason. I have Connor Hellebuck of the Winnipeg Jets, who has one year left in his contract at $6.1 million. But at age 30, could be a player that wants to be on his way out with Winnipeg, especially if they're going to be more in a retooling direction. You can see just had a fantastic season again, a 920 save percentage in 64 games. And with Hellebuck, he's a player that I think if he wants to go to a contending team, Winnipeg will definitely allow that. But Hellebuck should be acting in his best interest. He's about to be a free agent. He's about to get the biggest payday, hopefully, of his career, because he definitely deserves it after being severely underpaid throughout the last few seasons. But Hellebuck is a player that I definitely see being dealt in. For a team that wants to have maybe just one year of a big-time guy like Buffalo, maybe even a Carolina, Hellebuck would fit perfectly. But now going on to the last player of the list and another teammate of Connor Hellebuck's, I'm going to go on to Mark Scheifele, who's almost in the exact same position as Hellebuck. He has one year left on his deal at $6.1 million, but as we see Winnipeg kind of transition onto that next era, I see Scheifele definitely being gone. Blake Wheeler could be as well, but I see Scheifele being a player that definitely ends up leaving, whether it be via trade or in free agency. You can see this last year, 42 goals, 68 points, and 81 games. To me, we were talking about the potential connection between Tara Vinen and the Jets. Well, I think I think Shifley fits in perfectly with Carolina. That's the exact type of player they need. An absolute dynamic goal scorer who can also be a playmaker when he decides to be. And I think for Carolina, it could be the type of trade that could put them over the top. But we'll see a lot of trade. We'll see a lot of movement for both of those teams in the full group. With Mark Shifley, I think he'll be a humongous domino and likely the biggest one to fall. But those are my 15 NHL players that I see being dealt this offseason. Let us know down below. What do you guys think of my picks? What do you agree? What do you disagree with? And who do you see being the biggest NHL players to be dealt over the next few months? Let us know all your thoughts. Of course, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell if you haven't already for more hockey and trade content just like this all throughout the offseason. And of course, share the video for all the hockey fans you guys know online. Get the trade content out to them and click on this card for all my trade content right on the playlist. My name is Nathan and I hope you have a fantastic day. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.